This video is sponsored by Google for Developers. As of 2021, YouTube is the second most visited website in the world, right after Google. This highlights its immense popularity and the vast amount of content it offers, with users uploading over 500 hours of video every single minute. Which made me think, how can we use the Google AI called Gemini and other Google tools to build something unique. Well, in the busy world of YouTube, where views are the currency of success, I've always strived to see my videos soar. The platform's mysterious algorithm plays the puppet master, choosing which content gets displayed in the spotlight and which dies and never resurrects. Imagine though a secret passageway to this exclusive club, a little bit of coding magic that lets me slip my videos into the recommended slots. My journey on YouTube has been a roller coaster of viral hits and quiet periods. I devised a cunning plan, a seemingly ordinary Google Chrome extension. Hidden within its code though, lies my ace in the hole. <laughs> a script that very slightly shifts the odds, spotlighting my videos in a uniquely Curated selection. Oh, why won't you work? <gasps> there are four things that we need to do. First is to create a Google Chrome extension. Second of all is to fetch within that Google Chrome extension my YouTube videos, as well as the current YouTube video that is being watched. Thirdly, we need to use the Google Gemini API and one of its language models to take the details about the YouTube video that's currently being watched, to analyze it and create a one sentence bespoke call to action when the user gets to the end of the video, when he reads it, for it to direct him onto clicking one of our videos. And finally, we need to create an overlay, an injection of HTML into the YouTube video player to actually display our results and the call to action. So, let's get coding. Creating a Chrome extension is ridiculously easy. You need two files. You need an index.html file where you have the body and the way your extension will look like and a manifest file, which are just basic settings about that extension. Then you go onto the browser, you go onto Chrome slash extensions, and you load your unpacked files. So you load the folder where your Chrome extension physically exists. So that index and that manifest file, this is the top secret folder. I select it, it unpacks it. And there we go. We have a hello extension right here. So now if we go into our extensions and I can find the hello extension right here, if I just pin it and then I'll click it, you see that we have a hello extensions text pop-up, which is our index.html. And that's how simple it is. So now that we have the Chrome extension, what's next? Well, next we need to fetch data. We need to use the YouTube data API, the version free of it, uh, to fetch data not only from my channel, but also the data of the current video that's being watched. Now, how are we going to do it? Well, fetching data from my channel is easy because there's an endpoint for it where we pass in the channel ID, which I can access from my YouTube account settings. And with that ID, I'm able to fetch 20 of my most popular videos. The second YouTube API endpoint will allow us to fetch data about the current video that's being watched. What that endpoint will allow us to do is fetch data like the title and the description of the video and any other keywords that we can use to then send to one of the Gemini API language models and for it to analyze it and send us the data back that we require. But we'll get to that later. Now, let's actually go ahead and fetch those APIs and see how we can do that. In order to use the YouTube data API, you actually need to enable it in the Cloud Console. Let me show you how to do that. Once you're in Cloud Console, go to API and Services. Then enable APIs and services at the very top. And then if you just scroll down, you'll see under YouTube, the YouTube Data API v3. Just click on it, click enable, and off you go. Once it is actually enabled, you'll need to create an API key. The way you can do that, let's just give it a second. Right here under credentials, if you click credentials, you'll click create credentials, and you can click API key and you'll get your API key so you're ready to go and call some YouTube data APIs. 
Now let's very quickly look at the code. I've created two helper functions. I've created an extract YouTube ID function, which matches the regex or actually doesn't match specific parts of the URL to extract the specific YouTube ID. What I'm talking about is if we go to YouTube, you'll see the URL. This is the URL that we're going to be passing in. And after the V equals right here, we get this specific ID right here. And this is the specific video ID in this case uh, that will allow us to fetch the details about this specific video. Uh, the other part of the uh, helper functions is just a very generic fetch data function, which allows me to call any API and then just handles all the try and catches and the errors. And then I have some core functionality. I have fetch video details where I'm fetching the details of the current video that I'm on. And then we have fetch random videos from channel where I'm fetching videos from my channel. By default, as part of the API, I'm saying that I want the max results for this to be 20, but actually I want less than that. Uh, so I'm randomly selecting six videos, which I do in an inline function right here. I'm randomly selecting six videos out of the 20 to display and be returned as JSON. And that's basically it. Now this is where the fun begins because we're actually going to start using the Gemini API to give it some prompts and for it to give us the output that we are looking for for this specific sneaky Chrome extension. Now, how do we get started with using Gemini API in Node.js? Well, for any API for Gemini, you need an API key. So you can go to your Google AI Studio, which is the page you can see right here, and you can create an API key in your new project. And as soon as you do that, you're gonna have your API key and you can write your code. Now, once you have the API key, you'll actually need to install the package to be able to use the generative AI. So let's go to a terminal. In this case, I'm using Warp AI and as a side, side tip, Warp AI, the best terminal I have ever used. It's AI driven. You can do a bunch of really cool things like save the command prompts that you often forget, style it any way you want. And it has this nice history save feature and a bunch of other. So I highly, highly recommend it. So we need to install the at Google slash generative AI NPM package. So let's do that. There we go. We'll go through the installation, install the package and we are all good. Now let's go to the code and actually see what I have written. As part of running this Gemini model, we actually need to import Google Generative AI from the package that you have just installed and pass in your Gemini API key. Please never pass in your API key directly in your code. Use a .env environment to store all your keys. Never expose them like this. It's very, very bad. Now, you need to initialize the Gen AI. So essentially you create a new instance of the Google Generative AI passing in your key and you're good to go. I create a function called the run Gemini model, and essentially it's just a try catch statement, where in the try statement, I call the instance of the generative AI, and I tell it what type of model I want to use. Now there is different models. There is the Gemini Pro, the Gemini Pro Vision. I'm going to do another video on covering all the models and how they work. In this case, we're using the Gemini Pro, and the Gemini Pro model essentially accepts text input, and it gives you text output. And in this case, I have given it a prompt. Before, we used the YouTube Data API to fetch the details of the current video that's being watched. And in this case, inside this prompt, I'm saying, given the title, and I'm passing in the title of the video that we currently fetched the details for, please produce a one-line call to action sentence that creatively combines the genre of the video with the genre of web development and fun programming. So what I want to achieve by this is I want Gemini to take and understand the current genre of the title and of the video that is being watched and somewhat connect it to web development in some creative way. And I needed to find the solution to do this, which in general could be quite difficult. Now I added extra prompt to this saying, start with something like, you watch this video because dot dot dot. So you will want to watch these videos because, and I want Gemini to find that link and the relation. So it's all up to the AI to decide how it's going to do it and what output it's going to produce. And as a final prompt, I said, please make the relation of these two creative. And then as part of the remaining code, we're essentially calling the model and we're passing in the prompt and that prompt get goes to Gemini and it creates a response. So a text output that it sends back to us as a result. And then we convert this response to text and we console log the text. So I think now is the time to actually see it in action. All right, and now we can see it actually works. You can see that we have the video ID. You can see that we have the call that fetches the specific description and title of this vi current video that's playing. You can see that we have six of my randomized videos from my channels being called and fetched. One of them being, I hate website builders, change my mind. It's a good video, it's a good video. 
And then finally, we have the prompt that Gemini returns to us based on the title. So what it came up with is, you saw the shady side of Italian cuisine. Now see how developers cook up delicious websites with these coding capers. Uh, look, I told it to be creative. <laughs> it's been creative. Amazing. Claps to Gemini. Claps to Gemini. Let's try another video. So to the world's most isolated hotels, Gemini said, you watched this video because you loved exploring isolated places. Now dive into these web development videos that will take your coding skills to remote corners of the programming world. Well done, Gemini. Well done, Gemini. <laughs> this is great. All right, right. Well, now we have this working. The last part, the last part is to actually write the overlay. So I'm just going to code this up now and then we're going to see the final result. All right. The moment of truth has come. By the way, I have coded the whole UI in JavaScript. Do you realize how much effort that takes to style things using JavaScript declarations? But the most important thing is that it works. So without any further ado, let's see this Chrome extension in its true habitat. Recommending my videos on every video you watch. Let's have a look. I am going to pick, is this currently the most underrated Porsche? Let's skip to the very end of the video. And, hey, it works. You watch this video because you love exploring underrated gems. Now discover hidden programming treasures in our web dev video series. Uh, ba -ba 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 -bum. I investigated Mexico's deadly Coca-Cola addiction. Let's go. Come on, Gemini. I believe in you. I believe in you. You watch this video because you crave truth. Try these other videos to quench your thirst for knowledge. Look at that. That's it. That's that's good. Gemini is doing a good job. Okay, let's try another one. I rescued an injured owl. No way. Come on. If it's able to do this, then Gemini is absolutely smashing it. All right, let's skip to the end. Come on, give me something good. Give me something good. Give me a good connection. Give me a good connection. If you enjoyed watching me rescue an injured owl, you love these videos of me coding like a superhero, debugging like a detective and deploying like a ninja. <laughs> Developer Philip everywhere, guys. Now, now, what's the aim of the game now? Well, now, the aim of the game is to market this extension, is to add some more functionality on top that developers will crave, they'll download it, and they won't even know this script exists. So, if this video gets 5,000 likes, well, I'll film part two, and I will do my best to market it to the world and take over YouTube recommendations. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you, Google for Developers, for sponsoring this video, and I will see you in the next one.